Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. IRS is recruiting volunteers nationwide to help taxpayers this filing season. Oh, great. The IRS is looking for collection volunteers again. I mean, honestly, they'll probably end up like hiring Antifa or something. They're like, good news, everyone. We, the IRS, have just organized this completely grassroots, totally anti-fascist, uh, quote, volunteer, end quote, group of collection people. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Hey, Johnny, pull that guy's nose hairs out one by one for trying to hide money in his sock. I don't care if he says he wasn't hiding it from us, but instead hiding it from his wife. I mean, honestly, if I could steal a nickel for every time I've heard that excuse, we could actually fund Social Security. And don't forget the cavity search, Johnny. Nice work. You've earned an extra helping of Hunter Biden's secret stash. Uh, which isn't paid, mind you. This is, this is volunteer work. It's just a secret stash of, like, mandatory IRS volunteer office supplies, like volunteer collection office supply stuff that we divide out amongst like the charitable group members in proportion to how many thumbs they've broken. Just kidding. You know, volunteering is a good thing. I'm just kidding. Here's another uh, tasteless joke. Have you ever heard somebody say, it's as easy as taking candy from a baby? <gasps> My candy! It's all gone! Even my West Hollywood candy! It's like, whatever, that's ridiculous! I mean, those things cry like crazy! My Twix bar! My very Milky Way! <gasps> my Reese's penis! It, it's worse than setting off a car alarm! Who's done this to me? Who has taken candy from a baby? And unlike with the car, the owner of the baby is usually in the general vicinity, ready and able to, like, mace you or something. That'll be like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> also, uh, trying to run from a crying baby is not at all dignified and may draw attention. Luckily, there is a solution. You found something? The solution, sir? The size, the material, all fits. What you want to do is you want to steal the candy while the kid's in the public school system. Because, like, the public schools have a policy of not telling the mace-wielding parents, like, anything. Wait a minute. He kind of looks like a baby. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Come on! I mean, honestly, they may even invite you into the school so the kids can learn to, like, empathize with the with the baby thieves. I wish you would reconsider. This isn't a rival company you're battling with. School, people won't stand for it. Pish push! It would be like taking candy from a baby. See, that sounds like a larf. Let's try it right now. IRS Tax Tip 2022-190, December 14, 2022. Last year, more than 58,000 IRS volunteers gave back to their communities by preparing more than 2.2 million federal income tax returns for individuals and families nationwide. These volunteers provided free tax help in communities across the country. The IRS is recruiting volunteers now for the 2023 filing season. There's a link to the recruiting here. Uh, for over 50 years, the IRS Volunteer Income Tax Assistance and Tax Counseling for the Elderly programs, there's a link to those programs here, have offered free tax preparation to people with low to moderate income that need to help preparing their own tax returns. These uh, includes people with disabilities and senior citizens. Many sites also assist individuals for whom English is a second language. So obviously the capacity to be you know, bilingual could be quite valuable in certain situations to help out with taxes, which can be quite complex, even on the low income side of things these days, in part due to some changes in the law, making you know these refundable credits can be kind of confusing, child tax credits and the, uh, the changes to, to things like the stimulus payments and whatnot that have happened uh, over the years, the prepayments for the uh, you know, child tax credits and whatnot, the earned income credit is quite complex <laughs> as well. And uh, so in any case, and bilingual volunteers are particularly needed. So clearly they're looking for bilingual 
uh, volunteers, which makes sense. Volunteering with these programs is easy and flexible. No previous experience is required. The IRS provides free online tax law training for volunteers. So note that clearly working in these kind of situations can look good on a resume. So it's a it might be a worthwhile activity to help out the community and to be working with you know tax law stuff in a practical type of way, and you know uh, possibly you know, working with the IRS to some degree could be useful as well. So the program offers flexible volunteer hours and locations, including some virtual opportunities. Volunteers can pick from various roles depending on their interest and experience. Tax professionals like enrolled agents and accountants can earn CPE credits. So that, that's another kind of incentive. You can get your CPE credits. This isn't pay. This is volunteer work, but you might get, you might be able to get some of those, vol those CPE credits at least. Volunteers with certain professional st uh, statuses, there's a link to that here, can earn continuing education credits by completing the required tax law training certification via Link and Learn Taxes. There's a link to that. And serving as a volunteer uh, instructor, tax return preparer, or quality uh, reviewer in the VITA or the VCE programs. Some program sites now have online volunteering opportunities. So clearly with the whole pandemic thing, I think a lot of people really kind of uh, were suffering for the fact that they don't have the, the in-person volunteer kind of uh, approach because, and then now it's kind of back. So we still have that, but uh, you would think of course the IRS would still like to get everything online if they could. I don't think it's quite possible at this point because many of the people that are gonna need help with language and help with you know, uh, filling out the taxes and so on are probably, not going to be the same they're going to want in-person help generally but uh, you might be able to do some some work online as well and if anything that could be done might be more efficient also just note between these two programs it's you might be thinking where you want to specialize in the vita or the tce so there's so you could think you know are you going to be working with people that are going to be older individuals or or not older individuals that are of the low to moderate uh, income level and there's differences in, in the tax returns. So clearly if you're working with people that are still in the working age range, you would expect to have a lot of things related to possibly uh, filing statuses, the uh, whether they're, you know, how many dependents they are, are they head of household or are they uh, single in those kinds of situations, how many dependents will they have, if they have kids, you got, you've got the uh, credits with the child tax credits and possibly earned income tax credits and that kind of stuff. And you've got W-2 earnings, you would think. For older individuals that are past their work years, you would think then that you might have other kind of questions about whether or not something is income or something, if they're getting benefit payments like Social Security, Medicare, and this kind of stuff. Uh, what kind of stuff has to be added in income? What kind of stuff doesn't? Uh, need to be in income? Are they a dependent of someone else's tax return or are are they uh, fi filing their own tax return and so on? Might have investment kind of income. Most of the income might be coming from benefit programs, uh, Social Security and stuff like that, and uh, and investments coming out of like a 401k or an IRA for, for the money that's coming out. What's the taxableness of those kind of earnings? So you want to kind of get a, get an idea of where you want to be putting your time and why you'd want to be putting your time there and possibly learning the ins and outs of those fairly different kind of uh, lifespan tax return preparation areas. So volunteers at some sites can now help taxpayers over the phone or online, providing additional flexibility and convenience to volunteers and taxpayers. In-person program sites are usually located in places like community centers, libraries, schools, and churches. Once potential volunteers express interest, the IRS will send them an invitation to a virtual orientation session where they will learn more about the program. So if you're interested in that, and it is, I, it is a good thing, you know, you're not, you're not <laughs> stealing people's money here, trying to help. You know, they got to, the taxes are what they are. So we're going to have to help with the pain or the processing of the taxes. So people don't get behind and whatnot on that stuff, which can be frustrating. And so there's links to all that stuff here.